Trinidad folklore always has a lot of stories about snakes in the forest and hunters bouncing up a lot of snakes. Walk with me as we explore some of these folklores. And one main one is about Papa Boa and Taijin the hunter. And you know, most hunters that they talk about in these folklores used to overhunt and to teach them a lesson. They used to get lost in the forest. And basically they sometimes fall asleep by the buttress of a silk cotton tree or some tree with a large buttress. Um, so this is an example of see what Taijin would look like in the forest. Sleeping hunter. Alright. And as soon as he falls asleep, snake wrapped around his feet. And this is an introduction to our relocation for tonight in the northern range where Web will carry you on a journey to relocate a few species tonight, about six. And join in as we show you and do a little small profile on each species. And of course, it's good to see a little folklore here. And welcome one of our volunteers, Dave Moulton. <laughs> Alright, good night viewers. This is Wept Adventures again on the go and we are in some natural forest here in the Northern Range and we are about to relocate one of the Macawells or the Boar Constrictor. Um, I believe you may have seen this one before in one of our profiling videos. If not, look out for that soon. And obviously we have our snake doctor here with us as we like to call him Tarek Ali. Our expert on snakes and handling snakes here in Wept. And he is going to do a nice relocation, but of course, say a few words about this particular species before we go any further. Tarek. All right, folks, good night. This is a Macawell boa constrictor. This uh, specimen here is about seven foot long, and she's rather aggressive. Um, this was. What was that? Okay. Okay, all right. Whew. This. This one was um, given to us from someone who found it near the yard, close to the chickens, and we're just going to relocate her into some natural hut. Kishan, yeah. you, you seen that? What's that? Look at this. Another one. Oh, these guys are so good at camouflage. Huh? That is a chevron. Yep. Again. And these guys are riddled all over the northern range, especially in these nice niche areas here. This and this actually is a, a really good habitat for for this boa constrictor to survive yeah, in. So I'm we're actually... gonna rest him. Tarek is gonna rest him right inside that little spot and he would move on from there. You know there's a hole in the head is because um the person who handled this one before mm -hmm. wasn't very friend um gentle water. Right. So he's a little feisty, so Alright and this was actually a uh, oh, Okay. Alright, so she is already off. And we'd probably give her some space to to move. And actually I would not give her some space. I'll make sure and try to get as much of the mobility. I think we might need some light inside here guys. Not directly on her, but you can see how quickly she adapted to this environment. And she has found a nice little hole. To go into inside the rocks there. You can see how beautiful the skin is and the size and good. I don't think she could actually fit her full body. No, yeah. look, look up there. We'll see her coming out look somewhere. Foot up. Yeah, right on your left there. Right oh. There. oh, and here she is coming out now. You can see some movement of the leaves. She just made a nice circle and she's coming out there. Camouflage. Right. Keep the light a little bit off from her. Right, a little high up, right, and you can see the whole body, how she's moving in one way and coming out the other way on top there. Right, so it's good to see that these animals are, are well adapted to where we relocate them. And we have our full crew here of volunteers. Alright, everybody's on the inside here from Wept. And let's just take a nice closing video for enjoying her stay here 
in the northern range and this is relocation number two uh, another species that we'll be doing tonight I think you all saw the boar constrictor the marker well before um, safely finding a nice spot to stay uh, now we have another very famous species here which is the cascabel yes, very yeah. beautiful specimen really Antaric. Small one. see this kind of um, there's a name for this color it's a uh, kind of tan I think it's tan all right yeah and these babies could be in all different colors Okay, what can. what length do they usually grow up to? These can get up to seven feet long. Seven feet. Yep. Yeah. And diet is a small one like this would be lizards, mm -hmm. frogs, right? Uh, small, uh, small mice occasionally. Mm -hmm. When they get bigger, a lot of uh, bats, birds, and rats. Uh, rats. Or smaller possums that they could find out on trees. Right. Let's put, see. Put, these are the... boreal species. Right. They, they spend most of their Yep, in trees. Close look at her head here. All right, so if you look at the shape of the head, triangular, triangular. Do you have a close look in terms of identifying this specimen? You'll know what to look at. I'm just gonna set it down here. So chan, and let it go. Oh. All right, so that's actually a really nice shot. And um, we have Christopher here, of course, taking some some of his regular beautiful shots. As you can yep. see, just trying to find the other branches. They can extend their body a really good length. Yeah, or almost um, two thirds. Yeah. So I think she should be comfortable there. Cascadel. Alright, so we'll be doing a few relocations tonight. Alright, again located in the Northern Range tonight for our third relocation. After doing the Makawal and the Cascabel, we have the Mat. And Tarek is giving us a nice little idea of this specimen here. Here, yeah, this is the the mat, as it's locally known, or the tegu, mm -hmm. um, scientifically known as the Tupanambus tegurixen. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's a, he's a juvenile, and we're about to release him right around here. There's a lot of fruits, and he he'll, he's gonna scavenge, so we'll find something to eat. Right, looks like a pretty um, nice specimen there. Yep, healthy. he's healthy, and his right. tail has been doing well. Alright, and you all could look out for a profile on this one. To be released soon on the web page. Right, so right, he's so probably gonna look for a hole or try and borrow. Okay. Oh, you have and a nice view of his mouth there. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, that's a really nice wide shot of his mouth. See any black spot? Where his tongue is? Yeah. Right. Very very interesting. Alright, so. Alright, right, cool. Gonna just step back a little bit. I'm gonna count down to one, three, two. Watch it there, Chris. One. Yeah. Alright, so good. He's actually relaxed. That's a nice shot there if anybody has to take any pictures, Chris. Enjoy that moment. Yep. See, it looks like a bunch of leaves on the ground there now. Mm hmm. That is pretty cool. You want me to um, chase him or just leave yeah, him? No, you can just send him on his way so we know he's safe. Yeah. Come on. Oh. We have about six relocations and this is actually the fourth and fifth relocation of a pair of rainbow boas. And we have Christian and Tarek, our <laughs> resident snake doctor here, as we like to nickname, nickname him sometimes. Alright, I'm um, going to choose a nice location in the Northern Range to release these pairs. We'll do it spaced out, of course. And these were handed over from members of the public. Um, you know, they come around your yards and all these different ways that these snakes get into your household. And they are in pretty good health. They have been fed and so on um, for a few days and what have you. And right, well, Tarek would go along with it as we have just yeah. one more 
sneak to do. What about that lead right back there? Where he can... You can put a bigger one up there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Put this um, smaller one right on this rock up here. Mm-hmm. You gonna stand up over there? Yeah, sure. Alright. Enjoy. See how this camouflage looks up here. Alright, and as usual, these snakes would quickly adapt to any type of surrounding that we put them into here. And already found a nice little habitat to get into there. Alright, Christopher, you getting that right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back out on the left right here. Yeah, right on nice little crevice here in the rocks. Most likely, it might come out on that side, possibly. These snakes find some of the coolest places. Mm -hmm. You could be coming out to anyone. I think on he's them. coming left. He went up, so maybe. There are a lot of different angles for that <laughs> snake to, to lose itself inside here. So, um, not seen any activity, so I guess right, well, let's, she um, is safe there. Dave, if you could look out for the snake, and we'll release here on the time. Yeah, get it somewhere a little lower down. Right, right up here by this yeah. log. Let's watch your foot in. Make sure we have no. When our snakes are on. Alright. Sit down a little bit. Sit down a little bit. Alright. They have a way of getting themselves around. Alright, Ryan. Oh, Christian, as we call you. <laughs> good job. Thank you. And good job to the web team, as usual. I'm trying to help, help out these animals to reach themselves. Oops. Alright, so they will come out somewhere high up, most likely, and they are well camouflaged. Huh? Right, so I think I think we are about good there. Um, both specimens quickly adapted to their area. So we get on to the, other re the last relocation for tonight. So again from us here, stay tuned. We are here in the Northern Range, and just from that little snippet introduction video on folklore, um, we are using the same Makawel um, that was brought in to us and it's going to be relocated in these nice pristine forested areas and right by that same said buttress and we have our resident snake doctor <laughs> as we like to call him Tarek yeah, so this guy is about, um, it's about 4 foot mm -hmm. so he's going to feed on rats and birds this is going to set him down right on the side here yeah like right on the side here Nice. See, he's also um he's gonna shed soon, so he's gonna find a nice area to rub up on. Mhm. Mm it's a beautiful specimen as usual. We have crickets and so on right here too. So there's a lot of a lot of flora and fauna, and I'm sure there are a lot of small mammals around for the snake to feed on.